smell a lot, a mixture with red from the fires. And then Christ would speak and raise his hand and light would appear everywhere. And demons would run by the thousands. And you could not tell what nationality they were because they were full of dead men's bones. They didn't have no skin. They would stand in pits of fire. They'd be clothed and come up like a torch and go back down again. And on their bones would be worms as big as your thumb. And they were white. Dozens of them, they would scream and pull the worms out. And that's the worms you talk about here in Mark, where a worm never, never die. And there would be fire come around their feet, like a torch, you know, like a lighter or a butane lighter would go up. And that fire would keep burning them. They would scream and it would come back down around their feet. And I looked at the Lord and I said, Jesus, I did not know hell was like this. He said, this is the only beginning of sorrows. He said, what you see here is the torment for adulteresses and fornicators. I said, Lord Jesus, never, the world has made it so by compromising God's word that we're not going to get judged for these things. Buddy, you better repent if you're in adulterous affair. Because look at the tail end of it. You're going to end up losing everything anyway. Don't lose your soul. And I remember watching these, and I was screaming. I thought of my own life when I was in sin in the world. I thought, oh, my God, thank you for saving me, Lord Jesus. Amen. We've all Amen. sinned. Amen. 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 But we had to thank God for Christ who came so we wouldn't go to the of that nation. And I remember walking on with the Lord, you know, and uh, I could hear the, the regrets and the cries of the dead, and I looked at Jesus. And I said, Lord, can't you help them? Can't you do anything? And one woman put her bony hands together. I remember her voice said, it was a woman. She cried, Lord, forgive me. I won't never do the things I did before if you only let me out of hell. And the next would be a man's voice on the other side crying, Lord, I meant to change. I meant to give my life to you all the way. But I thought I had tomorrow, and tomorrow never came. And then you kept looking about it, the multitudes as excuses, screaming, some cursing God, some blaspheming the Lord. And I remember looking at the Lord and tears would come down his face and he would stop and converse with some of them. And I could hear him talking to him. He said, I give you many chances. I called you. I sent preachers and prophets to you. I sent apostles. But you didn't hear. You didn't want to listen. The lust of your flesh was more than my commandments. And I began to think of many people I knew in the same shape, you know. And I kept walking with the Lord. Such sorrow filled me. I was in the spirit. But I could feel and I could see. I had all my senses in him. And I thought of my family up above. And I said, oh my God, I don't want my family to come to hell. Some of them are still in the world and still halfway in you, Lord. And I was praying for them in hell. And I heard other people praying. And I said, Lord, Jesus, people pray in hell. He said, yes, but it's too late. So they cried to me to, to save their loved ones. And so I sent on the earth preachers and apostles to them. Some turn, some don't. And we walked on, and I began to dread just walking with him because it was so hard, and I was afraid, let me tell you. Because there were demons ever 25, 30 feet were huge demons. And if those souls tried to climb out of those pits, they would shove them back in and, and like they would touch them. And one of the people screamed, it's like a thousand razor blades ripping through their body, yet they didn't have a body. So I said to the Lord, do they feel like they have a real body? He said, yes. I said, fear God, who has the power to cast both soul and body in hell. And the, the, we must repent of our sins. God wants us to repent of the sins of our flesh and turn into a living God. And I remember walking with the Lord night after night, like three hours a night, and I would be so exhausted. And I would cry to the Lord, and he would bring me back like five in the morning, and it would be like daylight was coming. And I'd wake up my whole family and tell them what I was seeing, and I'd say, pray that you never go to this place. Keep your heart right. Serve the Lord. Stay in church. It was just dramatic on me what I was seeing. And... Um, we went through the left leg of hell. It was called the left leg the first night. He said, hell has a body shaped like a human being in the middle of the earth. And this is where we were going to the left leg. And he said, it's huge. And said, hell enlarges herself. He said, when you feel 
and hear the, the sound of the earth moving and, and the groans. He said earth uh, is having an earthquake and hell is enlarging herself to hold more souls. He showed me that. He showed me that. And in hell, there, okay, we came to the belly of hell. Now, the belly of hell, there's hot lava. Like you see volcanoes on television. Or if you've ever been to Hawaii, um, nothing can grow 400 years after lava goes over the land. And in hell, the, between the pits was this hot lava rock. And in the middle of hell, there was a uh, Many activities going on. I'm going to just explain it to you because I know you want to hear it. There was, um, say, Christ and I was standing up here looking down, okay? And he said, the belly of hell is three miles around. Okay? And he said, look and learn and listen. And I looked back over here to the left and high up, like a, a half a mile, was dirt ledge and carved out hollow places. Far back as you could see, Demons of all shapes and sizes. Okay, if you pick up these horror magazines, you see these wingback things with fangs. Remember those pictures in claws? And they're really real. They're in hell just like that. But they're very visible in hell, very visible. And they were digging out the earth and laughing and saying, we're going to get more souls for Satan. And they would make it new places to hold souls. Then I looked over that way. And there was thousands and thousands and thousands of people burning and screaming and pulling worms out of them. And, they, and Jesus said that is the torment and torture for servants that laid your crosses down. Servants that went back into Egypt. Men and women that knew the way but forsake it for the lust of the flesh more than my commandments. From, from, and he told me he'd been there for a long, long time. And he said, I looked, and they were some of them, uh, like one skeleton, I could see him real well, was bright red, burning, and had a make-believe book in his hand. And it was on fire, he was preaching the gospel. And it sounded good, and I want to clear this up to you guys so you'll understand. And because many critics, they don't believe that. And he was saying, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Christ and I, in an instant, was over there by him. And the Lord spoke to him, and he said, no. Uh, Yes, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, but you denied me. You were very prejudiced. You, you had hatred in your heart. And the Lord gave him a whole list of things that he had tried to deal with him to change his mind. And other scenes, like you wouldn't believe, Christ showed me about the fallen servants of the Lord. And I thought, oh my God. And he said he had given them many chances. In fact, we talked to him, And he had told them over and over to get right with him. He had called them, but they refused. <coughs> Many are called and few are chosen. And as you listen to the, their, their talks, and you listen to them, why? They quit serving the Lord. Some because there was no money. Some because of the pressure. Some because of talking about you. Some of them because of, uh, they felt like they got cheated in the churches. I mean, every excuse you could hear, they were talking about. But you got to obey Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. They're going to talk about you. They talked about Jesus. He said, are you ready to be hated for all men, for my name's sake? Are you ready to crucify your flesh and be hated? I am dead serious. Honey, this is not a happy, go pat me on the back way. It's a pressing way. It's a pressing way. And I mean, you're going to have people that loved you turn their back on you, talk about you like you're a dog. You better believe it. You better forgive them and go on with God. Yes. And don't let nothing stop you. The devil wants to use these things. Listen. The devil wants to use this. He knows he can't get us to go drink no more. Not to cuss no more. Not to commit adultery no more. So what does he do? He goes around where your friends are. He stops his little gossip clicks. Amen. And then he wants you to get angry at them and hate them to, to stop the anointing of God in your life. It's a trick of the devil. It's a trick of Satan. So you have to forgive them and cast that care on the Lord. You really have to. And so the devil cannot block up your anointing. I'm telling you the truth. And you have to release them unto God and let God deal with it. It's not your job anyway. God can do it. He can do a better job than you any day. And it's a trick of the devil to get your anointing plugged up.